Wednesday with a Scooter Review from me boys in the Buffalo Happy Hour. Today, we have a single barrel from Old Forester, and this is hand-selected by the team over at Attica Wine and Spirits. If you guessed that last week, congratulations, you don't win anything, but I guess a pat <laughs> on the back from me. Bragging uh, rights. <laughs> bragging rights, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, but this is single barrel coming out of Attica Wine and Spirits. They're not a sponsor of our show, but Michael, who is a sponsor of our show? Addies. You like that transition? That's I do, good. I do. This is an exciting <laughs> gift, so we're excited to review it. So nobody get mad or all their panties in a bunch or I don't know, whatever you can't or can't say in 2024. But if you Definitely are in the area and you want to try out wonderful different uh, single barrel options as well, uh, as well as ours at Clown and Kilty, head on down to Addies on Transit Road in Williamsville. They have a knowledgeable staff, in-house wine sommelier, and a app that you can use, search for inventory, and have things sh shipped right to your door. If you're in the great state of New York, just download the Addies app on the Apple App Store and the Google Playground Play Store. Derek, I was there when you got this, and we were literally, mm -hmm. like, lighting up uh, because one day we were going to try it eventually. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you would first, and then if I was around and you're like, all right, it's finally open, let's try <laughs> it. Uh, but that day arrived, and luckily I'm still here, so that's good. You never kicked me out of your life. Uh, this is a gift from your father-in-law. Correct. And he was, like, giddy to give this to you. Yeah. It was kind of kind of adorable, but he was he was actually fired up. So um, we love store picks. Yeah, yeah. And single barrels to begin with, but this is going to be a good one. Especially when it comes to Kentucky. If you've been following the channel for a while, you all know Mike and my, like, our view, the Buffalo Happy Hour Collective view on Kentucky products. They all taste pretty similarly. <laughs> when you get into single barrels, though, especially store picks, you start getting into the fun side of Kentucky, which is somebody from New York taking their palate down in Kentucky and making it better. No, uh, just taking a single barrel out of the distillery and making it an actual single barrel. If you don't know what a single barrel is, it's literally the name, but it's one singular barrel. Most times when you have mass produced products like Buffalo Trace or even Old Forester, the regular products, yeah. what they do is they take a ton, a ton, a ton of barrels, blend them all together and give you a product that way the old forester, old forester you get today is going to be extremely similar to the old forester you get in three years from now because it's a blend of all their products. The differences isn't going to be that drastic. When you talk about single barrels, though, the differences between each single barrel is extremely different, which is why they blend them together so they can have a consistent product. So this is the fun side of Kentucky that I actually enjoy drinking. So I'm excited to try this one out. I do like old forester generally. There is very few distilleries that I like to go to uh, when I do have to have Kentucky. Old Forester is one of them. Michter's is another. Mm -hmm. There's a few other ones in there, but I'm really excited to try this one out. Um, this one comes in at 100 proof. Uh, Old Forester did that a lot when they first started back in like 1870 because of the Bottled and Bond Act. They had to have, the, for the Bottled and Bond, there's requirements. We can get into it on a different episode, but one of the requirements is that they have to be 100 proof. This isn't Bottled and Bond, but they consistently made a lot of their products at 100 proof just because of that. Yep. Um, so Old Forester, it's owned by a guy named George Garvin Brown. Uh, he Back in 1870, he was a pharmaceutical salesman, and this translated a lot into his first initial products. His first bottled of the bourbon was in 1870, which is really exciting. They were one of the distilleries that were granted a license during Prohibition to be able to sell throughout Prohibition for medical use. Medicinal. Yeah, which is sweet because everybody in my family would have had an issue, and we would all have had to have all the whiskey in the world because that's just how it worked back then. Um, fun fact, though, about the uh, Old Forester Distillery is that they're the only bourbon that had been continuously sold by the same company before, during, and after Prohibition. Mm -hmm. Only company. That's pretty shocking, especially if you know how many other companies there were back then. This is barrel number 8603. Uh, we're trying it on a July 11th. And obviously, this is from Kentucky and came in about 79 or 69.99. July 11th? Did I say July 11th? I meant 6 11. Yeah. Hello? Hello? June 11th. Same thing. I'm not going to be here that date. What do you got going on, friend? Listen, I can't talk about it. You don't have anything happening. Except for something I could act. <laughs> Obsec, bro. There it is. All right, there she is. There she is. All right, uh, we'll, we'll get someone to pick that up. You're staring at him. <laughs> All, right, All right, go so ahead. Take your time. Top. Take your time. That's sick. So label branding, what we got here, it's a beautiful package, not a package, but beautiful label. 
It's black and gold, which is, I love those colors. It's got the single barrel tag on it from Attica Wine and Spirits, which is metal. Yeah, definitely a little bit metal. The real cork, which you don't see that oh. a lot with. Um, sniff, uh, sniff, is, sniff. It, is it real cork? Oh. Breathe it. Ooh. 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 Um, it is real cork. No, it isn't. It's rubber. Is this rubber or real cork? I can't tell. That's real cork. Um, couldn't tell in the lighting. Yeah, that's so a cork. It's a real cork. Come on super now. cool. And um, I like the ribbon on top that goes 100 proof all the way up and down. It's perforated, so it makes it easy to open. Signature on said fun. ribbon. Yeah. Classic gorgeous. old Forester, but Absolutely I do like gorgeous. their single barrel. Yeah. Right on there. So I would probably say um, A minus. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Nothing, nothing like super special, but it's definitely cool. All right. Uh, let's pour her out. We'll pour her out while we're using our Dram Diaries. If you're interested, head on over to... We have a link to it in our link tree, don't we? In our description of the video. In our yeah. description of the video. There it is. Head down and then you can pick up your own Dram Diary and you can fill out yours just like we're filling out ours, which is exciting. But our friend Greg, he made his uh, over time and he wants us to try it out and see what our thoughts are with some good feedback. So here we are. We're filling it out. I like it though. It's got a table of context, different graphs, different charts, and different uh, really specific questions that make you annotate it the and uh, dissect the whiskey the same way every single time from a uniform standpoint, which pleases my OCD. Yeah. So for the nose, Old Forester. Generally, Old Forester is really peppery, so I'm curious to see what this does. Right off the bat, I'm getting rubber. Which is why at first it confused me if it was a real cork, because as soon as I popped that open and I smelled it, I smelled a lot of rubber, which made me think that it was synthetic. Are you getting rubber on this? I am. I'm trying to go deeper than that. Wow, rude. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Obviously very traditional Kentucky, too, on the nose. You're getting a lot of honey, oak, vanilla. A little bit of actually kind of more. I'm getting like a salted butterscotch too. I'm getting baking spice. I can get baking spice. Man, you really got to dive deep into this nose to cut through it just because of what it is. Good call on butterscotch. You had to dig for that. Hell yeah. I told you I'd go deep. <laughs> Um, We're never going to monetize. There's almost like a wet hay in the nose. It might be from last week's. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. My nose can discern them. Where's our little dapper dude? We don't have our dapper dude anymore. We don't need our dapper dude. Oh, we need our dapper Drink it neat, bro. Oh, not I... putting that homogenous, non homogenous stem like leaf off water. I get it, but there's a lot of oil in this. What are you putting on this? What's this nose rating for you? I like that salted butternut or butternut. Jesus. I like this salted butterscotch smell. Yeah. I do like the caramel. And I like that it's not overpoweringly oak. This is also no age statement, which everybody should know. There's no age statement on this because every single barrel could be different. It just depends on which one they want to pick. Um, but for this one, they did not have an age statement on it. Probably just because of the, the label, they wanted to make a label that is consistent for all single barrels that they do. You see distilleries do that a lot. So each single barrel will have a different age statement, and they're not going to make a new label for each right. 200 bottles. So Nose, I'm going to go B check. I'm with you on that. Are you good with that? It's good. I like. I really do like that salted uh, butter scotch. I keep wanting to say butter squash, and that I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. I think they all, I think they banned that since the incident. Wow. Ooh, look at the lights on it too. Ooh, I like this. It's viscous. Very. I'm getting a lot of honey. I'm getting the caramel. 
feel like there's a touch of brown sugar on the initial taste. And some fig. I'm getting the oak on the initial taste. Oak is very prominent for me now. It wasn't in the nose. Getting some of that um, wood sugar. Some honey, like you said. And some baking spice. I'm not getting fig. I'll this is very sauce. viscous, though, for me. This coats your mouth. It, it has a really interesting experience because when you first have it, it burns your mouth. Oh. It's one of those... I have a weird thing when it comes to whiskey where I don't like a lot of burn, like in the pit of my stomach. But if something flashes my gums and it almost makes them numb right off the bat, for some reason, I love that. So, and this does that, especially if you swish it around your mouth a little bit. I feel like almost every old forester does that. Yeah. So, like, you take a sip of that and it gets you first with that initial numbness of the gums. But then when you swallow it, it kind of comes back for a second run of like the back end of your mouth, back end of your uh, nostril, which is a really interesting experience because it kind of hits you twofold. I'm going a check on this initial taste. Yeah. You? Mm-hmm. Hey, check. I agree, I agree, I agree. Ending note. It's not that this is one-dimensional, but I just feel like it's so thick on the initial taste that it coats your palate for so long that it's almost hard to decipher between the initial yeah. taste and the ending note. The ending note, I'm getting that remnants of baking spice, and that's pretty much it. Like, it's very balanced, but it just... It's such a powering initial taste that it just kind of does its thing and it doesn't go away in a really, really good way, yeah. if that makes sense. When it, you're right, this is extremely viscous and almost to the point where when it goes away, I'm kind of getting this flat syrupy Dr. Pepper. Mm hmm. Where it's like this very syrupy cherry, almost like a cherry simple syrup that you would find in a cocktail. This would be a really, I, I mean, Old Forester in general is really good for cocktails if you don't mind putting stuff in there that is a little bit more expensive. Not this one itself because it's a single barrel, but it has that like very viscous like maraschino cherry juice that is just very good. Could you, okay, would you sacrifice two ounces and make a Manhattan out of this? Yeah. I would too, and it would probably be to die for, <laughs> yeah. but great option. Uh, it's very sweet. Yeah. It's sugary on the back end. Mm -hmm. The So now that some, when we talk about drinking whiskey, which we can do another uh, video about like how to enjoy whiskey, like the dude that swishes it around in his glass and tosses it on the person next to him. It's a hilarious video, but we can talk about like how to drink whiskey. I always do enjoy taking a sip calmly first like don't try to decipher the first sip and just enjoy it because as soon as you are able to differentiate the initial taste and the ending note i feel like you can better articulate what your initial taste is because you know where that break point is yes the whole experience itself is very one-dimensional like you said but when you do have that realization of what that breaking point is you can see that the ending note is very syrupy Cherry, almost a little fig, like you said. And the initial taste is very bourbon forward, with, which is like the high oak, honey, sweetness a little bit. But the, the ending note is extremely sweet with this. Very, yeah. But the syrup and the cherry is the best call on the ending note. And I honestly like the ending note more than the mm -hmm. initial taste. I'm, an, I'm, I'm gonna go A++ on the ending note. I'll go A++. I think the- I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. I think the initial taste, for me, I'm going to change my initial taste rating. What? We already agreed three times on the eight check. <laughs> I'm going B+. Plus. B+. Plus. Yeah, I think that there could be a little bit more in the initial taste because you have to try so hard to differentiate the two. You don't have to change it. It's your own rating, friend. That's not true because yes, then it, it goes on the board and that's the Buffalo Happy Hour There's rating. There's no board anymore. There's we haven't no done board. it since the Nixon administration. Then we're going B+. Plus. All right, I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. I can't believe you're changing it. <laughs> you did. <laughs>
I didn't even write down my initial taste. Um, You're shocked. Yeah, I feel like this is very... At first glance, it's very one-dimensional. But at second glance, it's... The initial taste is so short because it's something everybody's had before. That oaky honey just kind of goes so quickly when you have that syrupy Dr. Pepper at the end. Yeah. All right. Final rating? Give me that countdown. Three, two, one. 89. 88.5. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job, team. Yeah. I like this a lot. It's a very, it's a very easy sipper. It can be added to a cocktail if you're nasty and you want to like waste two ounces of this and put it in a cocktail. I say waste kind of jokingly, but waste two ounces and put it in a cocktail. But this is a really good sipper that I would definitely have on a Tuesday night because it's not going to kill you. It gives you that like I'm drinking whiskey feeling with the the tingling of the gums. Yeah. The kind of reflux a little bit with the other burn that happens once you uh, swallow it. And it's just it's a very well-rounded Kentucky whiskey option that just like tickles every fancy that you need. I'm really glad that you got this yeah. as a gift and we were able to try it together. It's delicious. It's very good. Nice job. Nice, nice selection. Yes. Uh, across the board to the gift here and also to the staff that picked this barrel because it's honestly really good, yep. especially on a Tuesday night. Not that this is a Tuesday night, but it yes. is a Tuesday night. I wasn't going to admit that. Right. You know? They know we're alcoholics. We drink every day. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining today's episode and review of Old Forester Single Barrel coming out of our friends over at Attica Wine and Spirits. Thank you very much for this product. If you did drink with us tonight, we always recommend please drink responsibly. I almost slurred that out. That would have been embarrassing. Please drink responsibly. (laughs) Be a good person. And Michael. Do not litter. We are out. Yeah!